Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought I'd do today is I came out to the woods with an idea in my head from last night and I'm, I want to show you how to make an Asian style rat trap and I've shown you this before using a hollow tube made out of bamboo. Very simple trap to make if you have that piece of bamboo, that hollow tube ready made. It makes for a quick and efficient trap and I think that traps develop in different areas and different cultures depending again on the resources available we don't have those hollow type resources here in southeast ohio unless you find a stand of non-native bamboo and there's one not a long ways from here probably four miles from here there's a stand of non-native bamboo but none of it's really big enough to do that with it's big enough to make fishing poles cane poles things like that but it's not big enough to make a trap you need something that's you know three inches in diameter on the inside somewhere in that neighborhood so that the mouse or the rat can go inside of it to trip the trigger of the trap. So that got me to thinking, what can I use in my native resource to make that tube? And it got me thinking back to the video where I had made the shrink pot. And the shrink pot that we made out of tulip poplar, we hollowed out a tulip poplar tube and basically scribed the inside of it to form fit a bottom in it and then we put a cork in it to make a shrink pot. And it shrinks down as it dries out, which seals it very well in that bottom piece that you put into that area you've rimmed out on the inside. I'll put a link to that video in here in case you're interested in seeing how to make a Scandinavian style shrink pot. But we can use that same technology or that same methodology to make the tube that we need for this rat trap. So my next issue was when I made that shrink pot, I made it up in my outdoor shop. So I had the advantage of the shave horse to be able to hold that piece of wood still, to bore it out initially with an auger and then ream it out with a knife. I don't have that option in the woods. So what can I do to effectively make those tubes in the woods? I'm gonna show you right now, stay with me. Okay, I've got a nice big stand of poplars around me here. Anything from adult trees to, you know, things that are an inch, two inches in diameter saplings. And this sapling here is probably pretty close to three and a half inches in diameter. And it's got a crooked area right here where it's not growing exactly straight up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off right here at that crooked area. And this is where we're going to start to make our tube. We've got probably 50 or 60 tulip poplar saplings just in this general area I'm standing in right now. So taking one of them out and coppicing the landscape is not gonna hurt anything because these poplars are very prolific out here and they grow very quickly. If I had to guess, I'd say that this tree, which is probably 25 feet tall right now, is probably only two years old, maybe three at the most. So we're gonna take this one off with a saw and then we're gonna start our work.
All right, we're gonna use this auger, drill our initial hole in this tree. Okay, so now what I figure is, we want to hold this thing still while we're drilling into it. The easiest way to do that is to drill it while it's still in the ground. So let's get our auger started here. Let's adjust it just a little bit. You can see I've just got a T-handle in here. Another green sapling. I'm trying to make sure that we're fairly centered here. We're gonna go right down through the center of this dude, hopefully. Take it down to the collar. We'll know exactly how deep we are. All right. Now we just need to back her out. Okay. Now we can simply measure from here down. And we'll know how far we've cut this thing as far as the tube part goes. As we cut it off, we should have a hollow tube. We can repeat the process down the trunk. And this way it's held in place while we're doing our augering. Augers are definitely an underrated tool when it comes to the woods. And again, back to that whole five tool rule thing. Something to be able to bore holes in the wood. Could be as simple as an awl or as large as a two inch auger if you're building a cabin. Everything is dependent on the projects you plan to complete. But something like this is a very convenient size to carry, even for making things up to furniture or pinning smaller shelter poles and things like that together if you needed to. Okay, moment of truth here. Just kind of get off to the side here and measure. I'm gonna go just a little bit above things. I'm pulling the tree toward me as I cut is gonna to help to open that kerf instead of closing it. Take my time at the end. And we'll see what we end up with here. All right, we've got a hollow, it's a little off center, but that's really not gonna matter because we're gonna carve this out anyway. I would have liked to have got all the pith out of there, but I think I did anyway. So now we start the process of carving this into a tube and we have a nice clean surface to work with right here to start another hole to make another tube. Okay, so now I've got my tool kit here. Pretty simple wood crafting tool kit. I have an awl, I have a hook knife, I have a carving knife, and my auger and a strap. Now I'm going to get my carving knife out. I've used my haversack, which is leather, as a pad on my leg to be able to roll this log just like this to be able to carve that out. You can see by rolling that against my knife on that leather, what I'm getting is this coming out of there. Okay, so now it's just a matter of opening this thing up as large as we need it all the way around. And obviously our knife blade is just long enough to cross center line. That's gonna be important as well to understand is that you have to have a knife long enough to be able to get in from each side of this tube carve it out. OK, 
Okay. All right, we're probably, I don't know, five, eight, ten minutes in maybe. This is where we're at. So we got a little ways to go yet. But it's not a long, drawn out process really to get this done. It's just a matter of taking your time with it. Don't force anything. You got a backstop with this log. As long as you don't let the knife come out of the log, you, know, you got virtually no chance of cutting yourself in any way, shape, or form. Just kind of look at what you sneak a peek at what you're doing. Tilt the knife forward a little bit to the tip there on the inside to get to that middle. Remember to attack it from both sides. All right, so we're probably 20 minutes in. Got a pretty nice hollow tube here. I'm trying to keep my wall thickness as thin as possible. There's plenty of room for a mouse to get in there, but I also have to drill some more holes in this, and the thicker the walls are, the harder those holes are gonna to be to drill. So I'm trying to keep it as thin as possible as well, knowing that I've got a couple knots in here that are gonna cause me a little bit of a problem. But we should be uh, pretty close here in just a minute. Okay, now we've got to drill a couple holes in this thing for triggers and for loops. I've got my awl here that is rounded on one side and squared off on the other, and it has a hole drilled in it for sewing and things like that if I need to be. So I'm gonna take the square side of this and get pretty close to a thin edge, and I'm just going to start twisting this down. I don't wanna force it too hard because I don't wanna split the wood out. So I'm just gonna take it slow. You can see I'm already breaking through right there, and I don't need it to be real big around. I've got a pretty small piece of bank line, number six, number eight, I can't remember which it is, that I'm gonna put in that hole. So that hole doesn't need to be real, real big. Matter of fact, that's probably big enough right there. Now I need another one just offset from that. About one third of the way around in the same spot. We'll drill that dude in. And that's gonna be where our loop comes down and gets drawn tight. Again, I'm not trying to force the issue here because I don't want to crack this. And we could crack the tube now if we get on the outside here and get two rambunctious with it. Okay, we got two holes in there, piloted through there and that's good. Now, we've got to have a bigger hole, center line to that, about two thirds of the way into the trap, or excuse me, one third of the way into the trap. So about right here, we're gonna put another hole in there, dead center between those two. And that hole's gonna to have to be a little bit bigger. But we're a little further away from the edge now, so we can afford to get a little bit more serious with this thing and make a little bit bigger hole. Because this is gonna be the hole where a trigger stick goes in. So we'll just kind of work him in there gentle. And we'll carve this a little bit with our knife here in a minute. This is just kind of a pilot, pilot hole here. That's a pretty good size hole. That should be big enough for the small trigger that we're gonna put in there. Again, we can dress that up here in a few minutes. Right now, we're just trying to get our initial holes where we need them. Okay, so now I'm taking my knife and I'm just kind of cutting this out just a little bit right here to make this hole just a little bit bigger. I've already taken my knife and cleaned out the inside to get those rough edges off where I drilled through. And I just need a good solid platform here that's gonna hold my trigger. It doesn't have to be anything perfect or elaborate. If it's square, that's great. If it's not quite square, it's not gonna make that much of a difference. It's gonna be a push or a pull trigger. 
And that's really kind of your preference on what you do there. So the size you make that hole is really kind of up to you. I don't want to get too overzealous with it right off the bat until I get my trigger stick made because then I can make adjustments after the fact. I'm going to need one more hole in this thing, actually two more, a pass-through hole in the back side of this in exactly the same place, and that's where our stake and spring are going to go. So we're going to need to come back here and put another hole in it right here with our awl, and once we touch the bottom, we'll come in through the top of that, and that's where our stake and our spring pole mechanism are going to go. All right, so we're going to back off from the center line here again. We're not going to go too far out on this edge because we need a fairly good sized hole right here. And we're going to begin drilling into this side. Just like we did a minute ago. Slow and easy. Again, we're closer to this outside edge. So we have more of a chance of cracking the tube. So we got to take this one a little bit slower. And we'll have to bore this one out a little bit with our knife as well here in a minute. To about the size of this hole or a little bit larger. This whole process is probably going to take you a good half an hour or 40 minutes to make one trap. But once you've got the trap made, you're in pretty good shape. You won't have anything else to do, and that trap will be useful a bunch of times. The only thing you might have to replace on it might be your spring pole if it takes a set or something like that over time. But if you find a piece of good dry red oak or something like that with good long grain in it, you won't have a problem with that. We'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. All right, so once we get down to the bottom of this thing, and we're touching on this inside, we'll pull that dude out. And we'll come in from the opposite side on the bottom. Try to keep everything even. Come in about the same amount of space. And get another hole drilled in here. That's going to meet up with that one. Okay, now we need to open these holes up a little bit. Now, one thing I'll tell you is, if for some reason this tube cracks on you a little bit, it's not the end of the world. You can always wrap it with bank line or natural cordage to fix that problem. And all I'm doing with this is just making this hole big enough that I can get a small spring pole inside here. And then the bottom hole just needs to be big enough to receive the pointed or staked end of that spring pole. Again, I've got two layers of buffalo hide between me and my leg here, or between this knife blade and my leg. And I'm not forcing anything. I'm just taking my time with this. Thin that out just a shade in there. That'll take care of any edges that are getting roughed up inside there as I go. Better to take your time with this stuff than get in a hurry, get an injury, or mess up this trap now after you get all this work into it. Okay, so now we need to get our engine, and I just Grabbed a green stick here, but it's got plenty of spring to it. And it doesn't seem like it's going to break. So we're going to use this. It's about, I don't know, a little bit longer probably than my armpit to my fingertips or right in that area. So I'm going to take the, my carving knife and I'm going to take this end that's going to go into the tube and carve it down. into a point and this thing's got to go inside of that tube so we've got to round it down to where it can go in that tube and pass through the tube enough to have i don't know 
you know, a couple, three inches in the ground because this is actually going to be the stake for our trap as well as the spring pole for our trap. So let's kind of take this end here, get it carved down into a semblance of something that's a little bit more pointed. Okay, so this is almost exactly what we're looking for. We've got a spring pole here at the top and we'll adjust this part. And we've got a trigger stick hole here, two holes for our loop here. And we've got some stakes sticking out the bottom that will hold this in place on the ground when we're finished. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to prepare our trigger stick. Okay, so for a trigger, I'm gonna use a dry stick off the ground here. And this is bigger than what I need, but I'm gonna dress everything up because I just snapped it off. So I'm just gonna dress the ends of it up before I start working it down into a trigger. So I've got something a little bit neater to work with here. Now one side of this trigger is gonna be flat. And that'll be the side that goes down, or goes up, excuse me. And the other side's gonna be a little bit fatter. So what we're gonna do is we're going to shave this stick down a little bit. So we don't need it to be near this big around. It doesn't have to be anywhere near this big. But I wanted to start off with something bigger. So I had something to hold in my hand when I started working it down. And now we're just gonna kind of round it down as we go. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to carve a step in here that's gonna hook on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my protection again, put it in my lap here, <clears throat> get myself an anvil, and I'll use my saw frame for that anvil. And the step has to go here. So I'm going to have it sticking down into the trap about that far, and I'm just gonna rock back and forth on here Again, I'm not really trying to force the issue. And then I'm gonna cut a seven notch in here, just like this. And I'm going to, again, cut down in a little bit and carve down a little bit to get that seven notch in there. I need a pretty good seven notch in there to compensate for some of those rougher edges inside this trap right now. You know, you can make this thing as neat as you want to. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. It's just a trigger. So, the only thing that really counts is how good it sets in the trap. But I'm trying to make it halfway neat. And halfway sturdy at the same time. So I'm not having to make a trigger every two days because this one gets damaged when it's flipping around or anything. Well, now all I'm doing is I'm cutting a couple steps in the side here where I'm going to attach my line. And again, I'm not trying to get over anxious here or anything doing this. Injury is the last thing I want. So I'm just taking my time, rocking my knife down into the material, taking out a wedge until I get as deep as I want to get. And I'm getting pretty close now. Okay, so there's our trigger configuration. We've got a seven notch here, two seven notches here, the opposite direction to trap our string. And now we're ready to kind of assemble this trap and make any tweaks that we need to make to get it to operate correctly. So, all right, so I'm using a small diameter bank line for this. And I brought way more than I thought I was gonna need on purpose. I'll just unravel this. This is probably enough for at least two traps, maybe three. I've got a good 10 or 12 feet of this. Doesn't take a lot of cordage to make some of these traps, and that's what I like about them. So now we're going to start off with this by pulling our stick out of it and coming in here and getting our loop put in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to We'll open this back up just a little bit with our awl, just to make sure we got a pass through hole there. And we're gonna put our string through there and take that out. And this right here is actually gonna be tied on solid. 
So we can just take that and put a reef knot in there. And that's gonna be good enough. Just like that. And we can trim our tag off in a minute. Now, we're gonna take this end, the other end of this, and go back up through the hull, okay? From the inside. So we've got to ream this out enough that we can get that in there, just like that. And we wanna pull that up to here to become our loop on the inside. So what's gonna happen with this trap, if you've never seen one of these before, is it's gonna lay like this, and when the mouse trap is tripped, it's gonna yank up and trap the mouse here by the body and be a strangulation type trap is what's gonna happen. So now we've got that in place, and we can trim the tag, like I said, in a minute. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to bring that string that we tied off to make our loop. I just stuck this stake in the ground just like this, like it would be if the trap was set. And I'm going to bring this down to almost the sprung complete point. And I'm going to tie it up as if the trap were sprung. And I'm just going to go around here a couple of times like this. And then I'm going to come in here and create a clove hitch by making a loop and making another loop that passes behind it, just like this. Put both of those loops over the top, pull everything down. That's going to create a clove hitch there that should not come undone. And now I can cut that tag end here, just like this, and it should be okay. Now, this is what it's gonna look like when the trap is sprung. Now what we need to do is, we need to put our trigger stick in here and get our string attached to this to pull down the tension to unspring the trap. So we're gonna take the end of this, and again, we're just gonna put a clove hitch in this real quick with a stop knot. So I'll tie a stop knot in the end of this string, just like this. And then I'll take this and I'll put a clove hitch in here by making two loops and passing one behind the other put that down to the trigger ears, pull it down tight on that stop knot, just like that, and I'll have something that's not gonna slip. Okay, so now we're just gonna come up here and give ourselves enough loop here that we can move up and down this string, and we're gonna tie a simple overhand knot in the line to give ourselves about a two inch loop there, just like that. And again, we can get rid of the excess in a minute. And then we're going to take this and we're gonna tie a prussic knot here. So we're gonna go through it one time, which makes a lark set or a girth hitch, depending on the application. Go through it two times, just like we would do on a hasty ridge line. And the third time we go through, if we dress everything up nice and tight, what will happen here is this line will bind itself up on this other line with side to side pressure, just like this. So we're gonna tighten this thing way down and then we're gonna come down like this to set our traps. Okay, so I've trimmed my ends. Now, <clears throat> what we have to make sure of is, now is when we start adjusting things and making sure we're right, okay? We have to have enough line pulled down with this tensioning knot here, with this prussic, that once we set our trigger into the trigger well, first of all, it's gotta stay in the trigger well, so we may have to make an adjustment there to make sure it's gonna stay. But we do want it to be a fairly hair trigger, so it's okay that it's slippery. But it's gotta be enough slack there that this loop comes all the way down. You can see it's not quite there yet. So we need to slide this prussic up the line just a little bit more, and the pretense is that the animal goes in and when he goes after the bait, he trips the trap and he gets strangled right there. So we're gonna take this up just a little bit more up the line. Okay, a few adjustments we had to make there. And now 
You can see that bank line just conforms really well to the inside of that trap. One of the things I like about that waxed bank line is, that tarred bank line is, it really conforms well to the inside. And now we've got a hair trigger in here that when it's said and done, is gonna be the dinner bell ringing. Okay guys, I appreciate you joining me today out here for this video on how to make an Asian style mouse or rat trap off the Eastern Woodlands landscape. I appreciate your views, I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.